And I just wanted to get your thoughts on if you think T-Mobile can actually finally remove the disparity of network quality between them and the big two. I think they definitely can. I mean, what does it come down to? It comes down to two things. Having the spectrum and having not only the macro sites, as, as you were talking about, but also the small cell sites. And I think T-Mobile can execute on that. Like all they, they have the capacity. All they need to do is build out the cell sites that they need to increase the coverage, increase the capacity. And I think with the technological improvements they're making with their 5G network and with standalone 5G and the newer devices that they're putting in their consumers' hands, I think, yeah, I think they totally have a, the possibility of really narrowing that discrepancy between the networks and achieving network parity and providing a much better experience for T-Mobile customers. Gotcha. I had a feeling you would say that, which is which is why I let you go first. Here's you have my, a different opinion. Yeah. What do you think? What's the Dennis spicy take on this? Here's my take. Do I think it's possible for Timo to close the coverage gap? Absolutely. Do I think they're going to do it with their current strategy? Absolutely not. They would need to spend a lot more money in order to achieve those timelines. And the reason why I say that is because at and and Verizon aren't slowing down their expenditure, right? Like, it's not like they're just going to stop with their current deployment in the same way they didn't stop three years ago whenever T-Mobile caught up to, their, to the network quality of three years ago. Yeah. Like, Verizon has $10 billion allocated just to C-band deployment for capacity, but Verizon has also still actively been scooping up regional players like Bluegrass and stuff like that to expand their rural footprint and a native network to get off of roaming. at and has been aggressively expanding because of the deals with the first net contracts, right? They're not going to stop just expanding their footprint. So, so you got us, T-Mobile. We're going to stop now. So while I think T-Mobile might be able to, well, I think it's very likely T-Mobile's network quality will be on par with current day Verizon and AT&T. I don't necessarily think it's going to be on par with future day Verizon and AT&T outside of the possibility from a capacity standpoint, because they have such a large lead on their N41 deployment. But even that I feel like is something will that will, very very rapidly lose with time because it's not like Verizon is just sitting on their hands as they're sitting on C-band. Like they are actively putting the equipment up and just waiting to flip switches, right? So yeah, yeah. The that's T-Mobile's my thought. banking on the airline industry just delaying C-band deployment inevitably. No, okay. That's my okay. that's my thought yeah. on that. And also, one other important thing I want to say is is that T-Mobile's still behind in the most slow and expensive part of actually matching up with these networks. And that goes back to the small cells that I talked about and the backhaul upgrades. Backhaul upgrades are slow and expensive. It, it's just a matter of fact. It is slow and expensive. And small cells are slow and expensive because small cells, you have to put in like a thousand different permits with the city so you can start lighting up stuff, and you're going to need fiber ran to each and every single one of those small cells. Who has been aggressively deploying small cells? Stetson. Verizon. And Stetson, my town, my city isn't even an ultra wide band market, and I'm getting ultra wide band in the middle of 376, right? Your city, I believe, is a 5G market, and Holy you've seen smokes. how much coverage Verizon has at this point, and they are not slowing down. And then it's AT- actually concerning. Like, <laughs> and then AT and T, who is hard to find five G on. It's very hard. Did does have it? does have small cells? Remember how you asked me? Does it have to be millimeter wave? AT and T most definitely has small cells on the LT band. I've connected to their LAA and band thirty and different things like that. There was one right next to my apartment. Wow. T Mobile has zero, zero small cells that I'm aware of. And my market. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I guess yeah. we have to check on like cell mapper or something. But well, knowing it, you, Dennis, you're probably right. Like, it's one of those situations. So, you know, you claim you want network parity. You can't have network parity if you don't have small cells. Because like I mentioned before, Pittsburgh isn't going to let you put a macro cell site literally in the middle of downtown. It's just not happening. Like, <laughs> like there are spots in this tough terrain that only small cells can reach to fill in your coverage and to add capacity that N41 simply can't resolve for you. Like it's just a matter of fact. So do I think it will happen matching today's network quality? Sure. 
Do I think they'll match future Verizon at and Most definitely not, especially when they're talking about decreasing their CapEx over the coming years anyway. So it, the math doesn't line up. Sure. Yeah, I hear you on that. I'm optimistic. I like being optimistic. We'll see where it goes. 